Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Nerd Wrestling Review. It's a year to the day, almost a year to the first episode, but we finally got off our lazy asses and we're going to do this again. Y'all know me, Blue Goblin, this is Norman. <laughs> we're here to talk about what we talked about last year, the Royal Rumble. Uh, interesting show. Wasn't it interesting? Yeah, let's go with that. Start off with the, the kickoff match. It was originally supposed to be an elimination match, but we ended up with a regular tag team match, the New Day, the Stereotypes, versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. What do you think about this match? Uh, New Day's uh, really racist. Yeah. Find, and uh, Cesaro and Kidd, those guys are just amazing. Um, those those are some heels that are really over. It doesn't matter what those guys do, so long as they're showcasing their talent, they're going to get cheered, and WWE is just going to have to get used to it. Yeah, it's the uh, we. I wasn't originally going to talk about this match, but I I had to because the the new day. Uh, the crowd proved to Vince McMahon that this gimmick is complete crap. I mean, the new day was getting like get the fuck out of here heat. That's what kind of heat they were getting. The crowd just hated this 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 team. Uh, you know, there's a thing about that. The New Day, the crowd hated them. But as individuals, each one of them is, is great. If they put together um, an angle that worked with those three guys, they would be outstanding. It, it would be a great faction, but the New Day is just not happening. No, it just it's not working. It's a complete failure. Uh, they need to just scrap this gimmick and give them something different. Uh, the sooner the better, but the right team won. Cesaro and and uh, and Kid, the right team won. I liked the finish, uh, but not not a bad match. It was entertaining because of who was getting cheered and who was getting booed. Then the official show started with the Ascension versus the the, the old age outlaws. <laughs> wow, the Ascension. They, they, what'd you think? <laughs> The only thing that match proved to me was that the Outlaws could still go. Um, that was it. Pretty much. I mean, the the right team won, uh, but it's just I found it really hard to care. I mean, I really did because the WWE has buried the Ascension ever since they moved up to the main roster from NXT. And, uh, yeah, the Ascension got the win, but this match really didn't do them any favors. And it's like... Okay, we're now going to start kissing your ass after we buried you all this time. Uh, I'm just thankful the Ascension won. That's pretty much it. Uh, what was the next match? I think it went to the tag team title match. That's right. That. And yeah. We got bombarded by tag team matches at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, this was basically a tag rumble. I mean, uh, Miz and Miz Dow and the Usos, this is like the 47,000th time they've wrestled each other. Use the same formula. Have Miz work most of the match while the stunt double does absolutely nothing, which doesn't logically make any sense. You would think the star would want the stunt double to do all the work while the star would soak up all the glory and the stunt double gets nothing. But hey, this is WWE. We're not supposed to use logic. Uh, the match was what it was and the Usos won. What did you think of this match? Damian Mizdale is amazing. He's great. It doesn't matter what they give him to do. Damian Sandow is going to be a top-notch performer until the day he retires. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, they're, they've given him crappy gimmick after crappy gimmick, but he's found a way to make it work and make them entertaining. I, I, I love it. Um, not a bad match, but... I. Just think they used this match as an excuse to plant further seeds into the upcoming Miz and Miz Dow feud that hopefully culminates at WrestleMania. It served its purpose. Uh, let's see, what was next? Bellas and oh. uh, Paige and Natalia. The piss break. Uh, I barely paid attention to this match. Uh, it wasn't really a match. It was uh, a poor attempt to glorify the Bellas and to put them over and make them dominant over two farly superior athletes in Natalia and Paige. Exactly. And 
this this match, bad I think, match. yeah, this was a bad match. I barely watched it. The only thing I watched was uh, one of the Bellas getting the pin over Natalia. I, I just didn't fucking care. I didn't care. I don't care about the Bellas. I don't care that they're with John Cena and Daniel Bryan. I don't care. Nobody cares. We, uh, what was what was the nickname I gave them? The Blowjob Twins? Yeah, something like that. I believe, uh, yeah, the Blowjob Twins. I think that's what I called them. This match sucked. I didn't care. I barely watched it. Uh, a Bella won. One of them. Who fucking cares? Uh, the, they're using the Divas now to do nothing but promote a totally crappy show that nobody cares about. This match sucked. And it was rough. What I did watch of it just felt rough. Then what was next? Um, the title match. The du- title. Yeah, the WWE World Heavyweight title match. Uh, Cena, Lesnar, Rollins. This is easily one of the best triple threat matches I've seen in a long time. This was surprisingly great. <laughs> it had John Cena in it, so that's the real surpriser. Cena's in it, and it's a great match. Um, good spots. Uh, they did the right thing putting Rollins in there. After after watching the match, I thought they did the right thing putting Rollins in there because if this was just Cena Lesnar again, I would have probably fell asleep during this match. I, I can see that. Um, the one thing they did, I don't know if they meant to do it, but they put Lesnar over. Yeah. I mean, for a champion who's never there, the crowd sure did love him. Yeah, that was that was weird. Of course, of course they're going to boo Cena regardless. Uh, Seth got Which some. They did. Yeah, well, yeah. Of course, uh, Seth Rollins, he got some heat. Uh, but Seth Rollins was easily the star of this match. He really was. He was pulling out some crazy shit. He did this, um, like, picture-perfect elbow drop on Lesnar through that table. And it was such a beautiful spot. That'll go in some highlight reels for years to come. Then he pulls out that old Phoenix splash that he used when he was Tyler Black in Ring of Honor. And motherfucker didn't land right on Cena. He looks like he landed on Cena's leg or something. I guess that's how Cena's going to tuck his leg between his legs. Seth Rollins is going to splash it. But, um... I, I actually thought he had done a headbutt to his groin area. <laughs> I had to go back and watch it again just to see how he fucking landed on him, but... This was also basically a German suplex uh, fuck fest. There's like German suplex after German suplex after German suplex. Uh, but amazing, amazing match. Good dynamics. Good storytelling involved in the match. Good spots. Uh, good connections with the crowd, especially with Rollins. Um, a, a stellar match. Easily the best match of the night. One of the best triple threat matches I've seen in a wall in a long time. Fucking awesome. I loved it. Then the Royal Rumble match. You go first. I uh, I may be going against everybody else here, but I actually enjoyed it. I I didn't like the fact that they never allowed the ring to get too full of competitors. Yeah. Uh, but one of the reasons, I mean, it goes kind of contrary to what I just said. One of the reasons that that was was because of Bray Wyatt his performance in it, I mean, Bray Wyatt was eliminating people left and right, and he was making it a one-on-one thing for quite a while, uh, which I'm a huge Bray Wyatt fan, so... Yeah. Um, Bray Wyatt really shined in he, this. He come in at number five, and he lasted... I, I, I'm pretty sure that he lasted longer than anybody else. Oh, absolutely. Bray Wyatt... They made Bray Wyatt a star here in this, in this show. I think this was kind of like they're trying to make up for that shitty year he had last year especially after that fucking horrible feud with Cena. Uh, but they're building up Ray Wyatt strong. They're building him up for The Undertaker, which I'm not looking forward to that feud for WrestleMania. Um, probably the biggest shocker of the night was Daniel Bryan lasting as long as he did. That surprised me. I never wanted him to win the match, but I was expecting him to last longer than he did. Uh, yeah, I was expecting him to come down to at least the final five. Um Wow. He he was in and out of there pretty quickly. Not Titus O'Neil or Santino <laughs> Morella quick, but he, he was out of there in a pretty good time. And as soon as as soon as Daniel Bryan got thrown out, notice who threw him out, it was Bray Wyatt. 
and I think this continues to build on their feud because I don't believe Daniel Bryan has got a legitimate victory over Bray Wyatt yet, and that could sum up a, a storyline feud for WrestleMania. I'd rather see that than Bray Wyatt Undertaker. But what what was we had some surprise entrance. We had Bubba Ray Dudley. Uh, we had the Boogeyman. We had Diamond Dallas Page, uh, which he was actually pretty good. Um, but this whole Royal Rumble itself was really weak, and I felt like they could have done better. But as soon as they threw Daniel Bryan out, I knew the crowd was going to piss and moan and poon all over this match, regardless of who was going to end up winning. It didn't really matter. If Daniel Bryan didn't win, that, that Philadelphia crowd was just going to boo and piss and moan. Um, but what really let me down, what really disappointed me was Kofi Kingston. This is a guy who's made a career out of those stellar moments that will never be forgotten of how he can survive being eliminated. And he gets caught by the Rose, Adam Rose's rosebuds and carried back to the ring, which was him being saved from elimination, but he didn't do it himself. He was being helped back to the ring, whereas the other times he saved himself from elimination, he did it himself. He used his own skills. This just felt really lazily written for, for Kingston. And the fact that Cesaro didn't really have any big moments in this Rumble. No, he didn't. And I would have liked to have seen him. I mean, we've seen him throw out Big Show, but would have been nice would have been to see him throw two or three big guys out, one right after the other. Yeah. And, um, yeah, which speaking of the big guys, um, the ending of it, the thing I had the biggest problem with was Kane and the Big Show make it to the end. Yeah, two old fucks that suck the life out of every segment that they're a part of. You're telling me that those two guys are worthy of being part of the final four? Give me a fucking break. And the fact that um, Miz and Mizdow, they did nothing with them in the Royal Rumble. I thought this was the perfect chance for Mizdow to rebel against Miz you know, you could have had them come in at different spots and then have Miz Dow throw out the Miz or have Miz get thrown out and then have Miz Dow uh, replicate the throw out by throwing himself out. They would have, uh, uh, they should have done, they did something with them, but I was like, man, that was lame. Yeah. Well, um, going to the, the feuds with the tag teams, Goldust and Stardust had a pretty good one. I loved that. that Goldust was, that comes was in good. second, and they team up for a little while, and then Stardust just out of nowhere goes to try to throw Goldust out of the ring. Yeah. And Goldust gets back in there, and then they have a little back and forth. And, uh, yeah, I like that. It was a really big surprise showing, you know, Cody is selfish. Yes, but, hey, it's every man for himself. Uh, now, as far as who ended up winning, Roman Reigns. Um, wow. I have no problem with Roman Reigns winning. I think that's the right decision to make because you need a new star who hasn't had that spot yet to be given a chance. But the crowd and the fans on the internet have just been bitching and bitching and bitching about Roman Reigns winning. So what? Roman Reigns won. I'm happy for the guy. I'm going to give the guy a chance because it's somebody new. It's somebody who hasn't been in that main event thrust yet. You know, Daniel Bryan, yeah, he didn't win, but he's already been there. He's already been to the top of the mountain. Let somebody who hasn't had it yet have it. But the way he won really let me down. You mean to tell me you you couldn't do it without the help from The Rock? I mean, it's... The Rock has to run in and smack some people around so Roman Reigns can win. And then that, that, that tease with Rusev at the end, that, wow, really? I was kind of hoping they would go back and forth with that a little bit longer. But you know, as far as the fans go with their response to Roman Reigns win, I'm supporting Roman Reigns somewhat for the same reason you are. Um... Last year's Royal Rumble, the fans were all behind this guy, and they were wanting him to win last year, but we got screwed out of his victory for Batista. And this year, they're, they're making it about Daniel Bryan, which, you know, if you're a fan of Daniel Bryan and the way that he, you know, lives his life and everything else, 
Daniel Bryan's probably happy as hell for Roman Reigns. Yeah. And, you know, he's probably, you know, disappointed that, you know, he didn't get, you know, to shine in the Royal Rumble. But he's going to be happy for a competitor like Roman Reigns. Now, true, Roman Reigns did not nearly top himself to what he did last year in the Royal Rumble. Last year was a stellar performance by Reigns. This, not so much. But I find it funny that you said that because you're absolutely right. Most of the people who wanted Roman Reigns to win last year are pissing and moaning that he won this year. Saying that he's not ready yet. Then why did you want him to win it last year? Some of you people who said that he's not, who say he's not ready now, you wanted him to win it last year. So he was ready then, but he's not ready now? When the fuck is he ever going to be ready in your eyes? The fact of the matter is this. The WWE, I applaud them for this show. Was this show perfect? Fuck no. But the right guy won the Royal Rumble, and I'll tell you why. The WWE made their pick. They had their plan, and they stuck to it. They didn't cave in to whiny baby fans on the internet or in the crowds continually chanting Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan. Don't get me wrong. I love Daniel Bryan. He's a good baby face. He's a great wrestler. But one of the things that makes him a great baby face is that he doesn't always fucking win. If you want Daniel Bryan to never lose, always win everything, you're just going to create another John Cena that you're going to end up turning on in a couple of months' time, and you damn well know it. But Roman Reigns, I support him. They made their pick, and they stuck to it, and I applaud the WWE for that. Do you agree? I agree with that. And, you know, as far as uh, wrestlers go... I'll be a bigger Daniel Bryan fan uh, because he's a better performer. He's uh, he's more athletically gifted. But like you said, they've made their pick. Roman Reigns, they're going with it. It's not that he's bad, but, you know, it's... It's not always about having a thousand moves and being able to do high spots and flips and aerial assaults and shit. You know, this Philadelphia crowd probably would have cheered Hulk Hogan if he come in there. We know what kind of moveset this man has. Uh, exactly. It's like... Punch, leg drop, body slam. It doesn't matter how many moves you have in your set. As long as you're able to connect to the crowd and get a reaction, whether you're a, a baby face or a heel, as long as you're able to connect to that crowd and work that crowd and get them behind you no matter what you do, that's what makes a star. It's not doing a bunch of kicks, not doing a bunch of ninjutsu shit and high spots and all that crap, having to kill yourself just to get yourself over. If you can get yourself over in any way possible, you're a fucking star. And I think Roman Reigns can do it. Is he ready? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm going to give him a chance. So, on a scale of one to five stars, one being shit, five being perfect, how would you rate this entire show overall? Three and a half. Three and a half. That's where I about got it. Three and a half. Yeah. The, the Royal Rumble match itself could have been better. It was a bit weak, but it was still entertaining. It was still fun. It was certainly better than the 99 Royal Rumble was. But to me, the 99 Royal Rumble is still the worst Rumble in history. Uh, but this this show, this Rumble, it wasn't bad. The triple threat match for the world title was amazing. If, if anything, if you are still subscribed to that fucking network, go back and watch that match. Or if you haven't seen it yet, watch that triple threat match. It is amazing to watch. I loved it. Uh, you got anything to add? I don't know. How do you usually close your things out? By just saying this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, follow this guy on YouTube. I'll try to remember to put a link to his channel in the description below. And if you're watching this video on mine, watch this guy. I'll put a link on that. Okay, we're going to put this video on both our channels? I'm fine with yep. that. I'm fine with that. I'm a wrestler after all. <laughs> That's true, he is. He just got started. <laughs> so there's our review of the 2015 Royal Rumble. We are going to try to do these reviews more often, we're going to probably just do reviews of the pay-per-views, though, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, our next review will probably be the review for Fastlane. Fastlane. Taking place uh, right down the road. <laughs> yeah, down in Memphis. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, everybody. I am Groot. We'll see you all later.